who was a, a venture investor. So, uh, you know, about 30 or 40 percent, but this, the rest of, uh, of the audience was unaware of the fact. Um, so give me, before we get into the, the way you use data, tell me just the quick facts. How much do you put to work and what's your sort of philosophy be about how you invest? Sure. So Google Ventures is Google's venture arm, uh, up to $200 million a year into a variety of startups. We'll probably do uh, upwards of 100 investments in the next 12 months. Uh, and uh, we do a lot of hands-on engagement with our portfolio. You mentioned uh, data, which is really important to us. It's one of the frames we use to think about uh, venture investing. Uh, and at its heart, it's a team of right now 43 people uh, who are entrepreneurs, investors, scientists who care deeply about startups, having started companies, uh, and uh, are, are, are highly focused on uh, engaging with our portfolio to really help them make a difference by using the resources at Google, be it facilities, uh, uh, data tools, uh, or the 30,000 people that work there who are all expert in something. Uh, and so we, we encourage and have had a lot of engagement uh, with those resources with, the, with our portfolio. You kind of have an unfair advantage. It's like, well, if you, you know, take our investment and, w and we'll, we'll scale Google for you. Thank you. <laughs> that's, 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 that's part of the pitch is that we do have a, an advantage that we're trying to use to help our entrepreneurs. Starting a company is, is really difficult and sometimes lonely and if you can uh, get the help of people that can help you find your next engineer, it's sort of our recruiting efforts to help find technical talent uh, or uh, solve some UX design problems that you may not even know that you had, uh, that can be really powerful for a startup. So we've got every reason to, to lean in there. So let me ask you uh, what this uh, data-driven approach to investing is. I've had a couple of meetings with you where you've described it to me. Describe to the audience how you use data to make decisions about which companies you invest in. So let's assume there are two ways to think about problems and their solutions, qualitatively and quantitatively. Uh, Traditionally, the venture business was, is highly driven by qualitative assessments. What do I think of this person on my first meeting? Do I trust them? Are they referred by someone I know? And those are really important insights. We're trying to also look quantitatively uh, and apply uh, some data tools and metrics around uh, some questions that uh, it makes natural sense to us to try and uh, look at. Uh, having The team is largely from Google, so a lot of computer scientists and others who have been at Google a long time and are accustomed to thinking of these kinds of problems as ones that uh, you can solve by uh, applying the data frame, uh, if you will. Mike. Graham, you've actually yeah. built software that does this. What data informs it? Well, so... What's your secret sauce? <laughs> well, you can imagine... The premise for this project is just that Google as you know, has some of the world's experts in statistics, economics, machine learning. And so we thought it would be worth at least doing an experiment to see if we could take some of their knowledge and techniques and apply that to this domain of entrepreneurship and venture capital. So when, when, when we as VCs sit around a table thinking about a company, uh, we look at all kinds of data qualitatively. We look at the entrepreneurs and what they've done in the past. We look at the market. We look at the product. And so what we're trying to do is just take all of those heuristics or rules of thumb that VCs are already using, trying to see which, one of, which, which sets of those rules can be turned into something quantitative. Do you, do you take any of the data that you have that is uh, exclusive to Google, like search query data or, or you know, app usage data on Android or you know, data like that that you can leverage that is a unfair advantage? Well, the thing that I would imagine doing with that is trying to figure out which companies are growing quickly, but that turns out to actually solve a problem that we don't really have. I mean, we have really good deal flow at Google because we have great connections into the world of entrepreneurship and great connections with other VCs. So we, we don't lack for deal flow. We see a lot more companies than we can invest in. So what we focus our quantitative efforts on is trying to understand when a company comes to us and is presenting some information and telling us about their history and their financing and all that kind of stuff. We want to use our, our analytics to try and figure out if they're, if, to try and get a better sense of whether we should invest. We sort of join this, this quantitative work that we're doing with the insights and intuitions. You of our literally partners. do have a software platform that you've built where you plug in this data and it gives you a dashboard you can look at. Is that not true? 
I wish I could call it a platform. That sounds fancy. <laughs> I mean, we actually have uh, like a hack together Excel spreadsheet. We have a lot of different tools. You know, we, 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 a lot of times we approach this from the perspective of trying to answer specific questions. So we might say, you know, we could invest in small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies, which would be best from a portfolio perspective. And so we'll do some modeling around that question to try and understand what's going to be best for the firm overall. Well, that raises the question, you know, a company that puts $200 million to work uh, or more every year, you don't act like a normal VC in that, you know, who's your limited partners? Who, right. at, who at Google acts normally? I mean, it's not something that we're <laughs> striving to achieve. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I haven't noticed. <laughs> so, in other words, what I'm saying is that you don't have, like, limited partners. In a we have one a limited partner. It's set up as a separate entity. Uh, right. We work for the venture fund. Uh, Google, Google provides the capital, uh, and we make our investment decisions. We're not investing strategically to help Google with any product or sort of uh, uh, goal. So is your goal just a net return back to Google? Financial return. Financial return to Google. And what, how much do, are you... Well, financial expecting? return to the team and to Google. It is a right. venture fund. Ah, so you get paid. Or not paid, depending on the outcomes. Right. Well, good luck with that. So there was a... <laughs> seriously. Um, there, one example that I want to get into, because it was just very recently announced, uh, and also I think quite interesting given that in the air over the past year, day and a half, we've been talking about the public-private uh, conversation, the use of data, the role of policy and government, and, and Tim in the opening remarks mentioned that we are at a moment where we are having a conversation about what is the role of government. You just invested in a, in a company uh, that is a very data-driven company um, that uh, essentially is taking over where the government is leaving off for lack of funds. Can you explain that investment? Sure. You're uh, talking about DNA Nexus, I think, mm -hmm. which is a um, super interesting company that we're really excited about. Uh, they um, are building a back-end system to uh, help researchers use and understand genomic data, which, is, uh, which can be massive data sets. Uh, there's a database called the SRA database that the government uh, has been hosting as a uh, resource for uh, researchers. Uh, and it was potentially under threat for budget reasons, and so uh, DNA Nexus uh, stepped forward. We made some introductions to uh, folks at Google that we know and have worked with for a long time. Uh, and it, it made sense uh, for Google to start hosting that database with DNA Nexus's uh, support so that that research tool remains available to researchers everywhere. This is not a proprietary tool for just the company to right. use. So we're talking about a, a massive back end that allows for genomic information to be used for research and, you know, non-personally identifiable, I'm assuming. Totally anonymized. It's a government so database. A, as a pool of you know, processable, processable data, and it's on Google's servers. So your genes could be on Google's servers. Is that well? I wouldn't. Way, I mean, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't say that. Let's not make that the, the headline. This is a. This is a. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I, I. But I am interested in the fact that Google has the processing power, the capital, and and frankly, the interest, and sees the commercial opportunity. I think it's, I would, I would. And the government of, seems not to. I would frame it uh, and say that DNA Nexus saw an opportunity to make this tool available and chose Google as the storage provider. This will be one of the largest instances of storage in Google's cloud. It's a massive uh, database. But for the investment in DNA Nexus and the company and its leadership stepping forward and saying, we want to help host this data, um, I don't know that Google would be taking this step. I think it's, it's extraordinary, and I certainly hope you know, great things come out of it in terms of the research. It's really important work. I mean, we have a theme of trying to invest around important problems and, uh, uh, and people working on some of the hardest problems, and this is a company that's a great example of that. They're trying to do something really difficult, uh, and um, we're trying to help them every way we can. Well, we're, we're out of time, but I want you to give me, both of you, just three or four of the investments that you've made, uh, companies that you've invested in, and, and, and uh, very quickly what, you know, what they do. Uh, sure. Well, we talked about DNA Nexus. Uh, Climate Corporation is another company. Uh, former Googler David Freeberg founded the company. They provide weather insurance uh, for farmers. Uh, Atomab is a computational biology company on the topic of big data. Uh, uh, Google has provided them uh, a million hours of core processor time to help them solve some computational problems. They're developing uh, an antibody discovery platform. 
uh, uh, those are the first ones that come to the top of my mind. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're out of time. That is a 10-minute conversation. <laughs> thank you very much for coming to Web2 and telling us about Google Ventures. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Bill.